Hey guys, how's it going? It's Philip at Trade Genius. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the BNB token and they've changed some things with BNB in regards to how they deal with their ICOs. Now they've done uh, three ICOs, uh, the BitTorrent token, Fetch, and most recently uh, Seller, which will be listed uh, Monday night on BNB uh, or Binance, I should say. Now. The big complaint has been that when they do these ICOs, no one seems to be able to get in. There's such a huge demand, no one can get in, it times out, and by the time they're able to get through, or before they're even able to get, get through, the token sale's over uh, in a matter of seconds or minutes. So to combat that, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to a lottery system. Now this lottery system is what we're gonna talk about because there's implications now for BNB. Um, BNB's had a great run, uh, very bullish. It's It's been one of the, the strongest performers. It's just a steady, steady token that's doesn't really pop and drop, it just keeps climbing. And we're gonna talk about now how this, how this new rule is gonna basically play into the BNB performance going forward. So there's pros and cons to this because they're gonna allow lottery ticket allocations based on the amount of BNB you hold for a 20 day period prior to the next ICO's lottery. So we're gonna talk about that in this video. So without further ado, let's dive in and check it out. Trade genius. Guys, here's a trade we took on, uh, this is MANA BTC Decentraland, M-A-N-A BTC. Uh, we got in here uh, at this level around 12.37 on average. And uh, so far this move has peaked out over 11%. We've actually taken profit. We've actually moved our stop to our entry. There's no risk at all in this other than to let this thing uh, continue to move. And I think we've got some more upside left on this move. But you know, this is the kind of stuff that we're doing in the room. So if you're interested, head over to tradelikeagenius.com, uh, check out our specials. I will I'll, um, extend the uh, spring special another day so you can use that spring uh, coupon code if you want. But uh, check out what we have over there. Um, if you're interested in getting into the room with us, the, uh, the yearly plan is very inexpensive and we cover cryptos, binary options, which has a huge record, um, stock and ETFs, which Bob handles. Um, so there's a great community in there. I encourage you guys to check that out and look forward to seeing you in the room. All right, so let's head over to now the, uh, the what's happened with Binance, right? So the Binance Launchpad token sale format has changed. So basically what they are gonna do is they're going to, the number of tickets right off their website here, the number of tickets you can claim depends on the amount of BNB you hold over a 20 day period in the Binance account leading up to the day of the lottery and a maximum of five tickets per eligible account. So, you know, that's, that's gonna now be an incentive, right? To hold BNB. Um, some people like this, some people don't. They say it's just a way to make you know the the rich get richer because you know you gotta hold 500 BNB. Um, you know that's to me that's you know I guess that's all relative, right? You know, can you afford 500 BNB or not um, to up your chances? But it's a lottery system too. So just because you have five, let's just say you're you're able to be one of those people, you can have. 500 BNB tokens, which is uh, the max for this to get your maximum five lottery ticket allotment. Because it's a lottery, it doesn't mean you'd even get chosen at all. The guy with one lottery ticket could make out. So it's not a guarantee that you're even gonna get a slot. Um, it's just an incentive to hold that token BNB. Uh, now here's an interesting thing. Um, each user's BNB balance will be recorded in a snapshot at zero hours AM UTC. So that is, 8 p.m. Eastern, essentially. And uh, should a user's balance drop below the minimum balance required on any given day during the 20-day period, they will be put into the lower threshold. So let's say you were, um, you're looking for the 200 to 300 level, right? So you get two lottery tickets. If for some reason during that snapshot period, you dropped down below 200, let's say you had 190 BNB tokens because you had a bunch of trading and took out fees you're going to fall down into that slot, next slot lower and you can't get back to it. So uh, there's a, an incentive to make sure that your, your balance never falls below that threshold that you're trying to achieve. Um, and what it is is each, uh, each ticket represents $500 worth of the ICO token. So you really won't know the details of how much you're gonna get until the ICO has been announced. The next one they're saying is gonna be within the next two weeks. So you'll get an announcement, you'll get the ICO lottery date, which then 
20 days before that date is when they're going to start snapshotting. So what are the, what are the implications for the token? Well, um, if we look at BNB's price action, when they announced this, immediately we, 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 we drove up. Now, what had happened was <clears throat> on this run up here, we hadn't put a video out a few days ago. We said, hey, you know, make sure that you're not buying up here at the highs because uh, it's due for a breather. Didn't get a whole lot of pullback. We got a pullback and then it started, you know, butting its head on these highs. And then what happened here was the uh, ICO uh, was released. Um, uh, the seller ICO happened. Usually when those happen, you get a bit of a pullback as well. And then it was bought back up. This announcement created this breakthrough, this, this support level. So, or resistance level, I should say. And then we broke above it. So price action on BNB, um, you're probably going to get a bounce off this level. Now, uh, again, it depends on what the details are in the next couple of weeks for the next ICO. But once you have those parameters set and we go back and we look at what they're going to do, they're going to take a balance will be recorded in a snapshot at 0, 0,100 hours UTC. So about 8 p.m. Eastern. So what can happen there is that as you approach 8 p.m. Eastern, you could see a surge up in price and then a fall off in price. And that actually could be traded on a very short term uh time period. So that's something to keep an eye on to see if that is a phenomenon that plays out. Now, they have listed some some pros and cons or risks that, that you should be aware of. Uh, you know, holding the BNB does not guarantee an allocation. So, you know, again, it's a lottery. You may not even be picked. You could have be holding that 500 BNB and not get picked. Also, the BNB price will fluctuate. If BNB drops, what happens? Well, you might be looking at a P&L loss that exceeds what you possibly could make even if you won that lottery. So it's, this isn't like uh, a guarantee, you know, to go out there and get 500 BNB and hold it and you're gonna get, you may not even get a lottery ticket. So it's an interesting scenario um, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I think obviously people, especially people that have done the ICOs and have participated and are able to sell and flip that ICO for profit because if you get into these ICOs, the last three, uh, you basically been guaranteed profit by just selling them at the when the market lists it or when a Binance lists it and selling it. I mean, there's just, you know, there's profit to be made there. So this will be interesting to how this plays out. I think this first go round, I think we're going to see a bullish reaction. I think we'll see BNB go up. And I think how this plays out in, in between now and then will kind of dictate how the cycles perform between these hold periods for these upcoming ICOs. So I, I do think people will probably dive into this and hold this, uh, and, and I think it's bullish for BNB. But if that if that ICO doesn't pan out or it doesn't seem like it's very profitable for a lot of people, you might not see the same type of reaction on the next go round. So just keep that in mind on uh, upcoming ICOs after this first one. But I think this first one's bullish. I think that 20 period or 20 day period is gonna be bullish. I think depending on how the crowd makes out after the lottery selection uh, performs, you know, and price and, and things like that, I think that will probably determine how bullish the next ICO is after that. That's just my initial thoughts on all this. So just, just uh, you know, keep these risks in mind if you're getting thinking that this is a no-brainer uh, trade. I think there's there's some dynamics here that you do need to be aware of, um, especially if BNB, for whatever reason, goes down in price. If uh, crypto takes a hit or Bitcoin does a pullback, uh, BNB will pull back, and so you want to make sure that you're not actually looking at a net negative uh, effect by doing uh, going in, going all in on, on BNB, trying to get these lottery tickets, hoping you're going to get selected, hoping you're going to get the maximum amount of tickets. Because again, you may not get any tickets, uh, and, and if BNB falls back in price, uh, you're going to be down some money. So anyway, just uh, keep that in mind. Pretty interesting, though. I think, like I said, the, the initial reaction I think is going to be pretty bullish. So, uh, for for the, for the short term, I think buying off this previous resistance now, this should provide a, at least a bounce off this first attempt on this pullback, and that level is right around uh, 004 around that level, 0 0.004 BTC. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye. Trade genius.